Welcome to the name game. Workout number 65 is side piece. It's a 10 minute AMRAP, 10 alternating pistols, 50 double unders, five snatches at an ascending weight. So that barbell is gonna start for at males at 115, and you're gonna add 20 pounds each round. For females, you're gonna start at 85 pounds and you will add 10 pounds each round. You must change your own weights, right? So you can't set up multiple bars, you can't have a partner do it, you will be changing your own weights. So let's loop in Coach Chris and we will talk about strategy. All right, Ben, so what are your first impressions of the workout side piece? Yeah, so 10 minutes and everybody's gonna be working for 10 minutes uh, and everyone's gonna get to a different spot in this workout. So basically it's, it's like a classic open style ladder workout where you're having ascending weight so yeah, I mean, basically based on your strength level and your fitness level is how it's going to be, how deep you get into the workout. And for a lot of people, just based on your strength levels, just again, you're going to be sitting there forced to rest longer before you make another attempt because versus somebody else who maybe has a higher max. So mm -hmm. there is no scale for this is what I'm trying to say. Like everybody's going to do it RX. Um, it's just going to be how deep you can get into it basically. Right. Now, two things. If some, let's say someone, let's use a guy for an example. I have a max snatch at 165 pounds. Do you want me to still start at 115 pounds or should I scale to 95 for the first bar and then build from there? I would like to see people still start there. Okay. I mean, worst comes to worst, you, you're in round three and you're at 95%. Mm-hmm. And you're making attempts at 95% for four minutes, right. right? You might get three attempts in. So yep. for me, I'm perfectly fine with saying, regardless of what your max is, as long as your max isn't probably 135, 95. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm fine with you RXing this. What do you yeah. think? No, I totally agree. That's kind of why I asked just to make, just to make sure our athletes were aware because if you look at the desired stimulus of the workout, right? It's like you said, classic CrossFit style workout where there's an ascending barbell and you know, you're, everyone's going to get to the point unless you have, you know, a 275 snatch plus where it's like, you're going to get to that bar that everything slows down and you have to be very methodical and, and about each and every lift. And if you get to that a little earlier, like you said, guess what? You get more attempts at a heavyweight and that's kind of, kind of the, the, the ins and outs of that. Now, in terms of the snatch, my first inclination, and you could correct me if I'm wrong is power that bad boy as long as you can. Um, yeah. Just to keep the cycle speed short. Yeah. In general, I would say that's, that's probably a, a good, like a best practice. I would say choose when you are going to provided that you have a squat snatch that is a higher one rm than your power snatch obviously <laughs> if you have a higher power snatch just power the whole time yeah, but yeah for somebody who has a higher squat snatch than a power snatch decide before you go to make the attempt whether you're going to squat or power i mm -hmm. often see people are like powering and then they get a heavier bar and they haven't squatted at all and they missed the rep because they tried to power it um, and they mm -hmm. couldn't pull it high enough. So like know where that break point is for you and maybe even start a touch early on that so that it's mm -hmm. the, the squat snatch is sort of ingrained. So for example, maybe it's like you're a male, it's a, you know, 115, 135, 155 pound bar. It starts to get heavy for you, right? It's okay. I'm going to power the first three and then I'm going to squat that the last two, so that when I get to the 175 side, 175 pound bar, I know I'm going to have to squat snatch those anyway. So I've gotten two yep. reps of sort of ingraining that pattern before yep. I spill over into the next set where I automatically know that it's like, this is like 95%. And I also have to try to figure out how to squat snatch it on the first rep that I haven't done yep. this yet in the workout. Yeah, totally agree. That's something I try to advise all my athletes in when we hit a workout like that, because like, yes, you have a knee flexion movement with the pistols, but it's so different doing a body weight knee flexion or a lightweight knee flexion, like a wall ball, and then asking to go hit an 85% snatch from the floor, right? So I totally agree on that. 
Um, and then just don't be shocked if by the time you get to that bar, you're really starting to feel your quads, especially driving off the floor. You know, if your if your pull from the floor is technically sound in a squat snatch, you're probably going to be feeling those quads when you get to that point, especially with all the pistols. So just knowing that ahead of time. So you're not surprised by that. And you could still kind of create that power from the floor and then really focus on, you know, the timing and effectiveness of your pull under is going to be super important. Yeah. I, I often think people are like, oh yeah, obviously quads when I'm standing up, like out of a, the catch of a squat snatch, like the overhead squat portion. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but like people often underestimate in my opinion, how draining it is for your legs to pull off the ground that many mm -hmm. times along with pistols and a bounding movement. Like your legs yep. are probably going to be pretty blown up. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and that's, I mean, that's the, the foundation and the basis of the lift, right. Is you start with the pull from the floor and if your pull from the floor stinks, right. The re you're playing catch up the rest of the lift. And so, yeah, being prepped for that so that you, again, you're not surprised by it. Cause I've seen it before. Right. And I'm sure you have as well. You go to pull from the floor. I've experienced it before I go to pull it from the floor and I'm like, Oh no. Like, and then you're moving you really drop. slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like, Oh man, my quads are shot. And then you have to drop the bar. Maybe you don't even make an attempt, right? You do the classic yeah. snatch deadlift and then you're like, all right, wait, I need a second here. So, so don't be, you know, be prepared that you're pro you're going to feel that at some point. Yeah. And I guess my advice for, for besides just like, know that that's going to come on like that fatigue, but then also like, don't feel like you have to rip it off the floor. Like mm -hmm. you can, you can still put the power into the movement when you get to the power position. So like uh -huh. allow yourself to just sort of stay in good position. Don't try to do more than you have to and like allow the bar speed to build. And when you get to your hip, like don't sandbag the lift, like finish it from mm -hmm. at the top. Yeah. Pull, as long as you do that, you'll, you'll be okay. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Any last considerations in terms of actually pacing the pistol double under aspect of this workout? Yeah. I mean, personally, uh, even if you're good at pistols, you're in, in my opinion, you're going to want to move pretty smoothly on them, especially because the number of reps really isn't that high per round, 10 reps, five reps per leg. I would just move smooth, grab your jump rope, stay unbroken there, obviously change your weights and start hitting snatches. Mm -hmm. No need to race those necessarily, but you know, at the same time, you shouldn't be taking a day and a half to complete them because you also do need to change your weight for the snatches. Yeah. And don't forget about like that. That's a little, I won't say it's a break because it's really not because like it's mm -hmm. a pain to stay hinged over and like pulling your, your clips off, pulling the, the new weights on, like it's a pain in the butt, frankly, but it is, it's not high work, right? Like mm -hmm. it's a pain, but it's, it's certainly a break. So kind of factor that into a little bit of your pacing strategy, right? Like, you know, maybe round one, you could do them touch and go and quick drop it and pull on the next ones. Right. I'm not telling mm -hmm. you to do that, but like, certainly that's an option, right? You do have that, that break. Last thing I would say is like for double unders, even if you're someone who doesn't have refined double unders, don't put an intentional break in it. Mm -hmm. You're better off just like, Oh, I did 27 and I tripped. Okay. I'll start back up. I did another 13. And I tripped. Okay. And now I'll finish it out. Yep. Versus like saying, oh, I'm going to stop at 25 and take a five breath break or something like just plow through. And when you, you trip, you trip. Yeah, agreed. And lastly, we encourage as many people as possible to jump in with you and do these workouts. So you've got people who want to throw down with you, by all means, encourage them to do that. However, we want everyone to submit their scores, right? So where you're going to go to is orfitness.com. You'll hit on menu, drop down from the protocol. You'll hit that tab called name game. And then you'll go down to the first workout, which should be the newest one. And you're going to click that little green arrow there. You'll be able to enter your name as long also with the workout name. That's important because it tags it. So it doesn't get lost in the forum later on, but then you obviously are going to put your score or your time, and then you'll submit it. If you click on that little number next to it, you're going to see all the other comments, right? You might actually not be able to view them all. So if you hit view all comments, that's going to take you down sort of a leaderboard where you get to compare scores. And then also your coach gets to help determine where you stack up versus other competitors to be able to determine your individual weaknesses. It's going to be super helpful for us, pretty exciting and engaging for you guys. 
And if you're someone who's watching this, you're not as War Fitness athlete yet, I'll link to it below, but you can either check out the protocol or one-on-one -on -one coaching and we'll reach out, see if you're a good fit. And for everyone, best of luck on the workout.